I met him uh, back in the in the 1980s, and you know he was such an incredible genius. We don't realize how much of our life he changed. Actually, one of his Nobel prizes was for peace. Because he affected, he took over Einstein's campaigning against nuclear bomb testing, and when the treaty banning globally in, uh, a nuclear bomb testing was passed, he got a Nobel Prize. He did things like we all knew that ether made you unconscious; nobody knew how. So he sat down and thought about it and published a paper on the chemistry of unconsciousness that gave birth to all、um, anesthetics as we know them today. He worked out how a gene can cause disease. He was the first person to do that. He worked out how the environment affects our genes.、Um, so, in other words, our genes are like dimmer switches that can be turned on or off, and that started a whole new field of epigenetics. I mean, he was an absolute genius. And in in the seventies, he came across this extraordinary chemical, vitamin C, ascorbic acid,、uh, which, by the way, as we're going to learn, is what we call an antioxidant. Now, all of life is based on oxygen. And as we get really into the whole COVID-19 story, we're going to learn that people are, in effect, dying from a lack of oxygen, and most of them are actually dying effectively from scurvy. That is vitamin C deficiency. That might sound outrageous, but by the end of this talk, you're going to understand exactly why. And he found that vitamin C, a mere 10 milligrams, which is less than you can see. I'm taking one gram here. That's one、um, thousand milligrams. But 10 milligrams, yeah. Sorry, the camera's here. Yeah. So that's a thousand milligrams. 10 milligrams will stop you dying from scurvy, and yet 100,000 milligrams is not toxic. And he had never seen that kind of variability. So we run on oxygen, we burn oxygen, we make exhaust fumes called oxidants, and eventually they will kill us. That is why all oxygen-based life has a has a limit. And it's all this balance between oxygen and oxidants. Too, many, too much oxidation, you end up dead. Enough oxygen, you're very much alive. And by the way, that is why when you take your vitamin C every day, as I do, it gives you phenomenal energy. You、yeah. know, I'm in my 60s. I wake up in the morning. I'm full of energy. It's, it's, it's. You know, if anyone out there is tired, just try taking two or three grams of vitamin C a day and see what it does for you. So Linus Pauling spent the first, the last. 39 years of his life studying nothing but the chemistry of vitamin C. He noticed that all animals make vitamin C, all animals except for primates, and that includes monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees, and us.、Uh, the guinea pig, and another jungle-dwelling、uh, rodent called the uh, uh, capybara. Fruit-eating bats. Almost all bats don't make vitamin C. The red-vented bulbul bird. It's a bit like a robin.、Um, it's got a red vent. It's very pretty. A jungle-dwelling animal, and also there are two fish called the Amazonian ornamental Oscar fish and the teleost fish. They don't make vitamin C either. And what he noticed was that animals that make vitamin C don't generally get colds, flu, viral infections, and they also don't get cancer. So, have you ever seen a goat with a cold? You know, a goat makes sixteen grams of vitamin C a day, and You know, one gram is twenty oranges worth.、Yeah. So a goat sacrifices、uh, a ton of glucose because you make it from sugar、yeah. uh, from grass to make all this vitamin C. And the big question is why. And he got fascinated in that. He also found out that when an animal is exposed to a flu or cold or a virus or stress, they massively increase their production of vitamin C. Why? And that's what got him going. He had 39 years、uh, focusing on vitamin C. He had 39 years of abuse.、Uh, people said that he'd gone crazy. He hadn't. He just discovered nutritional medicine. They said he was a crank. Steve, do you know what a definition of a crank is? Please tell me. It's a, a small, efficient tool designed for generating revolutions. <laughs>《I'm showing you now, by the way, a slide that is totally accepted, normal stuff, and it's usually the evidence that people say to make there's no point taking vitamin C. And what it's actually showing is the blood level or plasma level of ascorbic acid, vitamin C,、uh, depending on whether you take a low dose like the RDA,、uh, 80 milligrams or 500 milligrams or 1,000 milligrams, all the way up to two and a half thousand milligrams. And what you can see is, for most normal, healthy people, not fighting an infection, not stressed, not exercising, not smoking,、uh, 
um, you, you kind of start to drop off in the amount of extra vitamin C in your blood at about 500 milligrams, which already is, is uh, you know, 10 supermarket oranges and 10 times more than the average person eats. But it's, they often say that it plateaus there. Now, it does level off. You can see that, but it doesn't stop. So even up to two and a half grams, uh, you're getting more vitamin C in your bloodstream. Actually, most people, that, that, that increase will go up to about five grams if you're not infected. The minute you're fighting a virus, it's completely different. This is the work of a friend of mine, uh, Owen Fonero. Uh, this was published on March the 13th. So what's happening here is he's taken a 10 gram gulp of ascorbic acid, and that's the black line. And what you can see is instantly his blood level shoots up. Mm -hmm. So we've got in our stomach, we've got a fast transporter which gets vitamin C into your bloodstream very fast. Now I'm gonna tell people that the very, very, very first sign of a cold or flu, take a two or five grams straight away. <clears throat> and it will fast track, up will go your blood level. Now what you see if you follow the black line is it dips down and then it goes up and then it dips down and then it goes up a little bit and eventually it, it peters out. And this is, well, not completely, but this is over an hour. The dotted line, by the way, is something called sodium ascorbate, uh, which is an alkaline version of vitamin C. And we can, you know, we can talk about that. But I quite like immediately to show the next slide because this is something really, really um, unique. <clears throat> In this slide, it's the same thing, a 10 gram gulp of ascorbic acid, that's the black line. This time it's being compared to intravenous sodium ascorbate, which is the dotted line. And just looking at the dotted line, you can see that it, the, the intravenous uh, 10 grams of sodium ascorbate does raise blood level. It gradually climbs up. Again, this is over an hour, so it, it, it works. But the extraordinary thing, and this has not been shown anywhere, people don't understand this, is look at what happens to vitamin C, ascorbic acid. It shoots up in, the, in literally a minute. It then drops down, it then goes up, it then drops down, it then goes up, it then drops down, it then goes up, and so on. What this is, is the vitamin C being spent. It's then reloaded inside immune cells. It's turned from the spent dehydroascorbic acid back to ascorbic acid, put back to work, does its antioxidant function again, gets spent, put back to work, gets spent, put back to work, and so on. have this incredible immune system and it's it's our defense is our skin uh, it's our digestive tract so for example if you make your your lung cells strong vitamin a, a helps that really does it but most importantly in the bone marrow we make immune cells and they're trained up if you like into navy army air force in the thymus which is in the base of the throat and they become things like t cells which attack viruses macrophages which gobble up viruses and so on so when we look at uh, covid19 we'll talk about that now what you're seeing here is a macrophage which is gobbling up in this case bacteria and you are making 2000 immune cells every single second and your ability to make them is completely dependent on your nutrition so in the next slide, we can actually talk about what happens with COVID-19. And in fact, any flu virus, because please understand this is part of the coronavirus family. And many colds and flu are caused by the same family. So it's, you know, they have slightly different characters, but we're still talking in the same zone. Now, a virus has these spiky bits, uh, spike proteins, they're called. And there's two of them. There's one called hemagglutinin, and it allows a virus to penetrate inside one of your cells. Viruses can't live you know, forever, uh, virus particles. They've got to get inside one of your cells, take over the DNA control center, reprogram the cell to make more virus particles. And then they have, those virus particles have to break out. And that's done by something called neuramidase. So drugs like Tamiflu, for example, are neuramidase inhibitors. Now, vitamin C is a neuramidase inhibitor. Um, elderberry, black elderberry, is a hemagglutinin uh, inhibitor. 
And then what happens is your immune cells, these are your white blood cells, like T cells and macrophages move in for the kill. They spot the virus and um, the, they, they effectively, both the virus and the T cells can use and make oxidants. You know, those dangerous sort of, I mean, you can think of them almost like bullets. So there starts to be a lot of oxidation and the virus uses that to protect itself. Uh, our immune system uses, uh, uses these, it actually creates um, something called hydrogen peroxide, which like bleach, it kind of can help to kill the virus. So um, what happens is we know that vitamin C and uh, vitamin D and zinc will actually boost the number and the function of T cells and macrophages. Selenium and zinc also help you to reload more quickly uh, all these uh, sort of important chemicals. And also, once a cell gets infected, it starts to produce something called interferon. So it was a big breakthrough many years ago when we discovered interferon. You can actually get interferon injections. It's a treatment for boosting immunity. It's made in cells that have become infected by a virus to interfere with the ability of the virus to replicate and go on and infect more cells. That is boosted by vitamin C. So at every single stage of the process, you can see vitamin C is terribly important, but also zinc, also vitamin D, also selenium, also black elderberry. There are others, but the point is that your immunity really does depend so fundamentally on, on nutrition. But there is something unique about COVID-19. Uh, do you want to know about that, Steve? We do, we do. And just, just on that, so vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, um, one of the best things we can be doing at the moment then is getting out, well, obviously eating food rich in vitamin C, supplementing, getting yeah. outside in the sunshine, getting some vitamin D because the sun's just started to come out. So not only does that help with the neurotransmitters and serotonin to make us feel good, it will actually help the body produce vitamin D. So even being out in the sun is going to help bolster the defense. Is that correct? It's totally true. And also exercise is an immune booster and <clears throat> having good, strong respiratory system is terribly important. Do you know, you might have, um, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but bats don't make vitamin C, right? Mm -hmm. And the bats ha seem to have transferred COVID-19 to us. So one of the questions is, is if bats don't make vitamin C and they've become infected with COVID-19, why aren't they all you know, dying of respiratory disease? And, uh, yeah, 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 that would be a very logical question. Yeah. And this has actually been researched, and the answer is interval training. Right. Now, some of you fitness fanatics know that you can get extremely fit if you do short, very high intensity exercise, and then you have a lull, and then you do it again. Now, it turns out that the bat is the only flying mammal, and when it flies, its heart rate goes up to 1,000 beats a minute, wow. and its temperature uh, goes right up, I mean, almost to 80 degrees. And it turns out that this flying mammal has got such an advanced uh, respiratory resilience. You know, its cardiovascular resilience is absolutely massive. So any respiratory downside of COVID-19 is, you know, it just pats off. You know. We've got red blood cells, uh, which contain hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is why we are alive, because it's how we carry oxygen around the body. And we, we need oxygen to make energy and live. And the way the oxygen is contained, because it's like, you know, a very high octane fuel, is um, with a special protein called heme, and um, uh, which is dependent upon iron. And that is why if you're iron deficient, you feel really, really tired. So you've got to have iron which combines with heme into hemoglobin. That is the whole basis of our life. Now, what happens, uh, uh, if you look at the next slide, is that the virus moves in, attacks the hemoglobin, and invades it, uh, a bit like a Trojan horse. It knocks out the heme and the iron, and it now is sort of cloaked. Uh, it's sort of looking like hemoglobin and it can travel around and now infect more cells. So it uses hemoglobin as its Trojan horse. Now that heme and iron, which is now what we call cell-free heme, floating around the bloodstream. Now iron really oxidizes very quickly when it's not contained, and that's what rust is. Mm -hmm. So you now get this massive 
um, uh, oxidation reaction, chain reaction uh, that is occurring. And what happens is this is such a shock to the body that the liver is instantly told to produce these um, containers to grab all this dangerous iron, and that's called ferritin. So blood levels in COVID-19 uh, people in, in ICU, ferritin levels shoot up. It's the body trying to capture this very, very dangerous um, iron. The immune cells, meanwhile, are recycling vitamin C. Uh, so in other words, vitamin C can move in and deal with this oxidant. Uh, it then gets spent, it changes its form, and the immune cells can turn it from its spent form, which is called dehydroascorbic acid, back into ascorbic acid to work again. But as this keeps going on, what happens is um, we run out of vitamin C. And these cells are also making something called nitric oxide. And that is essential for the cardiovascular system. So as nitric oxide starts to drop, um, you get vasoconstriction. So there's constriction of, of uh, blood vessels in the lungs. Uh, you start to have stress on the heart. The liver is stressed, having to make all this ferritin. And eventually the immune system totally panics and it goes into a massive hyper reaction, which is called a cytokine storm, producing all sorts of inflammatory chemicals. That's what happens in sepsis or septicemia, mm -hmm. uh, induced usually by a bacterial infection. Uh, you get this cytokine storm, uh, massive inflammation, bleeding in the, <clears throat> in the lungs, lack of hemoglobin, lack of oxygen, feeling like you can't breathe, feeling like your chest is really tight. This is very, very, very similar to pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid to say this is exactly what people are dying from. They're dying effectively from pneumonia, a lack of oxygen, heart failure uh, or liver failure. That's really what's happening. And at the absolute core of it is running out of vitamin C because once that vitamin C is spent, immune cells die off. And that's the end of the game. So you can see that it's actually right. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is taking vitamin C is not an adjunct, like a nice thing to do to help the process. Yeah. People are given cortisone, which is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. Excellent. They're given oxygen to supply more oxygen. Excellent. If they need it, a ventilator. Life-saving. But none of these are actually treating the fundamental underlying cause which is this massive destruction of hemoglobin and oxygen and oxidation. Vitamin C yep. is actually right in the middle of all this. Vitamin C is the primary antioxidant, but it's not the only one. So if you think of the oxidant like a fire, uh, vitamin E is like a fireproof glove, as is vitamin C. And what happens is, is the antioxidant gets oxidized. Mm -hmm. And it then has to be reloaded and put back to work. And coenzyme Q does that. Something called alpha lipoic acid does that. Anthocyanidine, cyan means blue. This is all the blue berries. Mm -hmm. So when I decided when I hit 50, I also supplement a antioxidant formula that contains all of these. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we want to eat as many of these as possible. In the next slide, what you want to be doing is eating all these really multicolored foods. So, you know, turmeric and mustard and ginger and carrots and butternut squash and, and uh, blueberries and, uh, you know, um, asparagus and avocado and beetroot and black currants and, you know, really pack in all those very important um, foods. Extra discovery. And okay. uh, the, Amer the Americans have made this. The Chinese didn't really make this. The Chinese started using high dose vitamin C in all hospitalized patients over six grams, up to 20 grams, a gram an hour. We've spoken about that. And that, that prevents the conversion into this acute respiratory distress stage. Then they gave intravenous vitamin C. But when someone goes into this acute reaction called the cytokine storm, it's not the virus that kills them. It is this massive inflammatory reaction. And normally to calm down a massive inflammatory reaction, what you do is you give a steroid drug. Um, cortisone, for example, we have cortisone mm -hmm. creams and cortisone asthma uh, inhalers and 
and all sorts. I remember when I had damaged my shoulder that they gave me a cortisone injection and I watched the shoulder in real time being x-rayed, you know, I, and you could see the inflammation and in went the needle, out came the cortisone and down went the inflammation. So there is nothing more powerful than cortisone. And cortisone is a mimic of our adrenal glands own hormone, which is called cortisol. By the way, there are various different drug names like prednisoline is effectively the same thing. That's what doctors use. Now, um, what's fascinating, and I actually learned this, you know, just just recently from from Paul Marek, is that the adrenal glands, actually, which make cortisone, actually store vitamin C. They have 100 times more vitamin C than anywhere else in the body. Wow. And um, when you go into a state of stress, the adrenal glands actually secrete vitamin C into the blood. Yes, what we're looking at here, uh, let me explain. ACTH down the bottom, this is called adrenocorticotrophic hormone. It's a message that the brain sends. So if you're under stress, let's say you're about to be eaten by a, you know, a lion or something or, or attacked, your brain sends an, this chemical, ACTH, a hormone, which tells the adrenal glands to release cortisol. But what you're seeing here, this is looking at the adrenal vein. In other words, the blood supply coming out of the adrenal glands when stimulated. And what you're seeing in red is this massive release of vitamin C when we are in a moment of acute stress. I mean, interesting. In other yeah. words, vitamin C is a stress hormone. Linus Pauling worked out that the what should be the RDA uh, is two grams of vitamin C. Yeah. And I would say that you know, it depends a bit on the age of the, of the child. You know, if they're very young, maybe half a gram, 500 yeah. milligrams. You know, if they're sort of seven, eight, nine, getting a little bit larger, in other words, half your body weight, yeah. and probably up to a gram, best taken 500 milligrams twice a day. Yeah. And you know if you're giving more than you need because, the, you know, you get loose bowels.